Back for another one of our fireside chats with Nine News Director of Reporting, Chris Vanderveen, who's our point man on COVID. I actually should turn the fireplace on for the fireplace chat, but I suppose even an unlit one works. Uh, Chris, where are we in terms of Colorado's vaccination schedule? As somebody who talks about this on television five days a week, I have difficulty following it. We're inching up, Kyle, and it's sort of a very small. We're talking about uh, yesterday, I believe it was around slightly over 2% of the population that have been vaccinating. Based upon the levels that we've seen this week, that number is increasing by about 0.2 to 0.3% a day. That's not great. They know we need to get better, and I think there's an expectation we're going to get better. I think we're starting to see some of the people that are in that 1A, 1B range, particularly the 1B, the top of the 1B range, 70 plus, starting to break through some of those barriers that really existed earlier in the week. More phone calls are going out, more information is going out. So those people who are 70 plus are starting to get vaccinated in relatively good numbers. But as the state acknowledged this week, that process is now going to take until the end of February. So we've got many, many more weeks to go before we get 70% of the 70, 70 plus population vaccinated. The governor recently said that he understands there's concern about the way that he has communicated changes to the vaccine schedule. His announcements that have come as surprises to vaccine providers, healthcare providers in the community. And uh, he said, you know, there's two ways to do this. You can either wait until the plan's perfect and roll it out, or you can state your intention as he does and then let the plan come together. That strikes me, though, as a pretty significant burden shift from the governor and the state to individual Coloradans who then spend their time and emotions wondering and trying to get their vaccines. Let's face it, Kyle, the last two and a half weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, has been, <clears throat> excuse me, has been an incredibly confusing time for businesses, for people who are trying to get vaccinated. And it comes down to the fact that the governor's office and the State Department of Health have issued directives that have, quite frankly, simply been quite confusing. It's difficult for me as a reporter to sort of communicate all of these things that have been going on, some of these things that have been changing last minute, late night. The governor acknowledged when I asked him that question earlier in the week that he's sort of like, we're building the car as we're driving. And that's the scenario that he puts forward in terms of what he's doing right now with the state. It is imperfect. And I think there's an acknowledgement that has been imperfect. But the messaging from the state has been a bit of a mess. And you know that, Kyle, because we have gotten so many phone calls from people, particularly Monday and Tuesday of this week, from people that were just desperate for information. They had heard the governor tell them, if you're 70 and older, you get vaccinated. And then later they had the state had to walk that back and say, well, wait a second. If you're 70 and older, you get vaccinated between now and February 28th. The problem is, is that everybody heard that they were moving to the front of the list to the line and they had to move to the back of the line or they didn't even know where the line existed. That's been confusing. And hopefully for there to be some sort of uh, success with this program, the vaccination program, that that confusion can go away as we get more vaccine in the state. You know, Chris, I think in, in fairness to the governor and the, all the folks working on this, you know, it's not fair to, to judge their actions with the uh, with the standard or the goal being perfection. Uh, we do have the ability to look at 49 other states and see how it's going there. You see other states having similar issues. Governor Cuomo in New York has his fingers in the pie. He's messing with the vaccine schedule and moving it around and causing issues. Over in Nebraska, you've got the, the governor there making the completely baffling suggestion that like in meatpacking plants, they should go down the line, figure out who are citizens and vaccinate those people and skip the people who aren't citizens. I mean, I mean that just I mean, anybody with a basic understanding of how a virus works in a contained space, that's baffling. Uh, how do you assess the way that Polis is leading now versus the way that he led at the beginning of the pandemic? There's certainly more confusion that has been a byproduct of what's going on. And I think the governor has rested on this idea that we're simply doing better than other states right now. And, and by most metrics, when it comes to vaccine distribution, at least this week, it does appear as if the state is doing better than most other states. But Kyle, quite frankly, that's a low bar that we have right now. It's like you say you know, everyone's running the race with broken legs 
and yet you're out in the lead, but you should be running the race a lot faster than you are right now, and that's simply not happening. We need to get this vaccine out as quickly as possible. I think the governor knows that. I think people who run the State Department of Health know that. And I think obviously there's been some disappointment of, of any real lack of federal coordination here. But don't, I wouldn't be, be patting ourselves on the back too much because we got a long way to go and a lot more vaccine to distribute. And we're at what, two and a half percent of the population when we need to get to closer to 70%. If we go with this rate, this is going to be a situation that we're going to be dealing with the rest of the year, and I don't think anybody wants to deal with that. You know, we have raised questions whenever the vaccine schedule and priorities shift. Um, that's our job, to question yeah. why decisions are, are, are being made. Uh, at the same time, what stuck with me this week was Health and Human Services at the federal level saying, folks, worry less about this schedule thing and just get shots in people. Just get them out the door. And if you do some people in, quote, unquote, the wrong order, it's not the end of the world. There's, there's a really good amount of logic in that. Uh, Kyle, because I think what, what you saw a lot of hospitals that were doing that in the state of Colorado is that, look, if you've got five doses of uh, vaccine and you've got four people that fit the criteria and one who doesn't, you're still getting that five doses out to people who need it. And every mo additional person who's vaccinated against the vaccine gives the vaccine one last chance, one less chance to get going in that community. And that's a big deal. And we shouldn't overlook that. And yes, absolutely. Can we concentrate too much on individual cases that seem to be out of order with the metrics that are put forward by the state? Absolutely. But it does give the idea that it's a bit of a haphazard response. And I worry about what message that sends in a community where we need people to trust the system. We need people to believe in the system that we have right now. And if that, if that belief is shaken in any way, does that cause some people to say, wait a second, I'm going to wait this one out. And the more people that wait it out, the further away we get from that 70% herd immunity that we really need to get to really start of cause it to lead to an end of this virus. Every day we watch as Colorado's hospitalization numbers tick down, now under 900. Obviously, they're coming down from all-time highs, so they are still high now. Every day I'm watching to see if they start ticking back up because we've seen a sustained number of days in a row with spikes in cases, and we know cases tend to turn into hospitalizations. Yeah, and I think that's really the key. We've seen over the last week and a half a gradual increase in cases in the state of Colorado. That's concerning. I think you've seen some people speculate, the governor did that again today, this idea that because there was such artificially low testing that took place during the holidays, meaning just people weren't getting tested in the numbers they usually do because the holidays were around, um, because of that, the case numbers were artificially low. And now we're simply building back up to where we would have been uh, in still a downward slope if people gotten tested the regular numbers. That's a leap of faith there that I think will be proven true or not true in the next week or so, because if that's true, if it's artificial, you won't see the increase in the hospitalizations. That's why routinely I go back to hospitalizations because it's a number that doesn't lie. Even if you have differences in case numbers because of how many people are getting tested, eventually the sick people who people get sick enough end up in the hospital. That number doesn't lie. So the key will be over the next week is to really look at hospitalizations. If it starts to increase correspondingly with the case increases, that means we got a problem. But if it continues to go down, that's a really good sign. And I think that will start to show itself really within the next five to seven days. Colorado, first state in the nation to find the, the UK variant of the virus, the, the more contagious version of the virus. And I know that, that both of us and other journalists took pains to tell people uh, this, this mutation is, is no more deadly, uh, should respond to the vaccines. It simply is easier to spread. And I think we're, we're trying to avoid panic and we're trying to avoid alarmism. But then I read a number of medical experts that say it's a numbers game. And this new mutation is bad news because if X percent of the population is going to get sick, X percent goes to the hospital, X percent dies, you increase the numbers on the front end with a more contagious virus, you're going to increase the numbers on the back end. You, you don't want to allow that variant to sort of gain a foothold in the community because we know that it just, that it, as you said, it's a numbers game. And the, the more people who get it, the, more, uh, the higher the odds of it transmitting to other people quickly. And we've seen this happen in England. And the worry is, is that if it gets a foothold 
in a community like Colorado, where it starts to spread rather quickly, it's going to be difficult to sort of bring it back down because, again, it's much more transmissible than the other variant. It's not any more deadly. It doesn't lead to any more severe symptoms, but it just goes from one person to another person easier. And because of that, you've got to be looking for it. And I really sort of wonder, and I think a question that I have for the state is how much are we really looking for it right now? We found it a couple of places. We, the, the, the numbers are low. We know it's swimming around the community. I wish we could sort of look in and, and with, with, with some sort of microscope and sort of see exactly how many people have that variant so we would know how big of a threat it is. Are we talking about three? Are we talking about 300? Are we talking about 3,000? Huge difference between the three. And if it's only three, and it's really not gaining a foothold, then we really don't have a whole lot to worry about. But if it's 3,000 and spreading quickly, we got a big problem on our hands because we're not vaccinating quickly enough to make a difference, and we're going to see another spike in cases. There's a huge difference, and the problem is right now we simply don't know how many of those cases are out there. What you just said there, Chris, took me back to the earliest weeks of this. I mean, back when we were still doing in-person briefings with health leaders, unmasked in rooms. And I, I remember hearing a Denver health leader say, uh, we don't believe that there's community spread. And I asked him, are, are we testing for community spread? No, we're not. And it's like, well, well, you know, I mean, heavens to Betsy. Like, I mean, come on. You know, so that that is a crucial question going forward uh, in terms of, you know, as we hope Hopefully head for the home stretch, you know, are we at an elevated danger level? And we just got to also level with people kind of, Chris, in conclusion about how close we are to that finish line. Yeah, I, I don't think we're as close to the finish line as the governor likes to say. Look, he's got a job. He's got an important job to do. And he says we're very close to the finish line. But we're still talking about the fact that it's going to take until June, July for you, for me, to receive vaccine for the vast majority of the population, at least according to the current structure right now by the state. We've got many more months to go of this. Now, I think there's gonna be a huge shift, and I think the governor acknowledges this. Once the population 70 plus and older, and the people who work, work and live in long-term healthcare facilities, once those folks are vaccinated, there's gonna be a huge shift because the big danger is largely starts to go away. But it doesn't mean the virus isn't spreading, and it doesn't mean it doesn't have implications for something such as schools, for example, where teachers are going back into classrooms without vaccinations, they has huge implications, particularly with variants swimming around that could potentially be uh, um, more spreading uh, more quickly. You've got implications that are going to last for months and months. And to be this idea that we're done in the end of February is, is ridiculous. We're not going to be done with this in the end of February. Things aren't going to go back to normal in the end of February. And we've talked about this a lot, Kyle, this idea that we need to be realistic with the audience. We need to be realistic with the state. Yes, things are going to change significantly at the end of February. Does it mean it's over? Absolutely not. We still have many, many more months of this to go before we reach that really critical part of 70% herd immunity. There's going to be a temptation to have what I guess you might call a, a spring break effect where you've got a bunch of people running around, making bad decisions, yelling, shots, shots, shots. Anyway, uh, Chris Vanderveen, thank you for taking the time. Uh, let's do this next week. You bet.